tubular reabsorption and secretion in distal convoluted tubule and collecting ducts. We have already discussed the reabsorption in the principal cells of distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct. In this particular video, we will focus on the intercalated cells of these segments of the nephron. How the intercalated cells are going to play part in the acid-base regulation of the body. So these segment of the nephron which have intercalated cells are located in the distal convoluted tubule, later segments and the cortical collecting tubule. Here we have the tubular lumen, the intercalated cells and the peritubular capillaries. This is the interstitium. The intercalated cells are further of two types, the alpha intercalated cells and the beta intercalated cells. The sodium-potassium ATPase pump are located on the basal side of the intercalated cells, but they are less important here. The main function of intercalated cells is to maintain acid-base balance inside the body. For that, we have a carbon dioxide that diffuses from the peritubular capillaries into the intercalated cell, the alpha intercalated cell. Okay, first, we will discuss the alpha intercalated cell in detail. The carbon dioxide that diffuses inside the intercalated cell, it combines with the water present here and by the combination of these two, carbonic acid is formed. The carbonic acid then diffuses into hydrogen ions and bicarbines. This process takes place in the presence of an enzyme which is called as carbonic anhydrase. So what happens to this hydrogen ion? This hydrogen ion is actively pumped into the tubular lumen with the help of two important transporters. The first important transporter is a hydrogen ATPase pump that actively pumps this hydrogen ion into the tubular lumen. The second important transporter is a hydrogen potassium ATPase pump that pump hydrogen into the tubular lumen in exchange for potassium. So these two pumps are active pumps that are pumping hydrogen into the tubular lumen. Remember that this is primary active transport. What happens to this bicarbonate ion? The bicarbonate ion, for this we have another important transporter that is located on the basal side of the intercalated cell which is called as anion exchanger. So this bicarbonate is reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries in exchange for a chloride ion. It is important to remember that this is new bicarbonate that is being formed. This is not the bicarbonate that we get from the tubular lumen. This is actually new bicarbonate that is formed through this reaction and with this secretion of each hydrogen ion into the tubular lumen, one new bicarbonate is reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries. This is important in maintaining acid-base balance inside the body. Another important transporter is located on the basal side of the alpha intercalated cells. This transporter is called as potassium chloride co-transporter. The chloride ions and the potassium ions that accumulates inside the alpha intercalated cells are reabsorbed back into the peritubular capillaries with the help of this potassium chloride co-transporter. So in this way, chloride and potassium are reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries. Now what happens with this hydrogen ion? The hydrogen ions that is secreted into the tubular lumen leads to decrease in pH of the urine. So the pH of the urine can decrease to up to 4.5. These hydrogen ions are very important in acidification of the urine. The hydrogen in the tubular lumen is buffered by very two important urinary buffers, the phosphate buffer and the ammonia buffer. What happens that within the tubular cells, we have an important amino acid which is called glutamine. The glutamine releases ammonia. This ammonia is secreted into the tubular lumen 
where it combines with the hydrogen ions to form ammonium that is then excreted in the urine. The second important urinary buffer is the phosphate buffer. So the hydrogen ions in the tubular lumen combine with the phosphate that is coming through the upper segments of the nephron. This hydrogen when combines with phosphate, it leads to the formation of H2PO4. Both this H2PO4 and the ammonium ions are excreted by the urine. This is how excessive hydrogen ions or acidity is eliminated from the body. Now let's discuss the beta intercalated cells. The beta intercalated cells have a very important protein transporter located on the apical membrane which is called as pendrin. This is an anion exchanger that leads to the secretion of bicarbonate ions inside the tubular lumen in exchange for a chloride ion. So one bicarbonate ion is released into the tubular lumen and one chloride ion is reabsorbed. The same protein transporters are also located in the ear and the thyroid gland. Mutations in this pendrin protein can lead to development of a syndrome which is called as pendrin syndrome. The lack of pendrin can lead to deficient bicarb secretion into the tubular lumen and can lead to the development of metabolic ankylosis. On the basal side of the beta intercalated cell, we have another important transporter which is a hydrogen ATPase pump that leads to reabsorption of hydrogen from the beta intercalated cells. Let's summarize. The alpha intercalated cells are important for the secretion of hydrogen ions, the acidification of the urine, and the reabsorption of new bicarbonate, while the beta intercalated cells are important for the secretion of bicarb and the reabsorption of hydrogen ions. Both these cells are important to maintain the acid-base balance inside the body.